or that you're familiar with, right? It's telling us what it is. They're still working on decoding the rest of these as, Genesis, uh, as Pegasus comes out with more updates. Guess what? They'll have these all decoded similar to the Genesis. They do a very nice job at Lipscomb, who's the project engineer, does a great job with this. He has a lot of feedback from technicians like myself who are involved with this program. Um, so there's our mode six stuff. We do look at something that says failure. Notice if they say pass, we would have to look this up since it's not decoded. The first thing you want to do when you look up test ID 72 is find out what test ID 72 is. Let's say this is a secondary air, but it doesn't have secondary air. Well, guess what? You're not going to do anything with that. That would be a normal failure. If this was a failure for cylinder number one misfire, we would then look at cylinder number one misfire. We'll talk about that misfire a little later on when we use our lab scope. Okay? So this is pretty nice. We could print stuff out. We could check a whole bunch of things out here. We can look at any DTCs. There's no codes. And look at all of the controllers. The primary controller, new generation controller three, is what's in this vehicle. Skim, that's the security. Nothing there. And by the way, you get a no start, check the skim, right Pierre? Yeah, that's right. Now some cars call it, or manufacturers call it something else other than skim. It's a security, but make sure, or immobilizer, that you know that right. there's not a problem there, because that can cause some issues. Instrument cluster, generic OBD2. Okay, so all of these controllers here, I'm not going to read them all for you, but you should really go through and look at them. Let's, uh, and there's a little here. note there, as I said before, but I can't say it enough. If you have codes in other controllers, you really have to look at them as well and figure out what the root cause is. It's, it's bitten many of us when we miss the root cause because it's in left field someplace that we don't think has any effect. And is, you know, there's no DTCs, but let's, let's talk about this no DTC stuff. This vehicle doesn't have a diagnostic trouble code. But we all realize before a DTC actually occurs, we have something called a pending code with OBD2. Right, Pierre? That's right. And, and if you look at mode 6, for example, um, you can usually see, uh, sometimes it's a little hard to figure out, but you can see um, when, what that pending code is. And before, we were just talking about mode 6. Before a pending code, we have a mode 6 issue. So it's always good to do all the controller checks, look at mode six, look at pending DTCs, look at DTCs, and make sure we have no problem before we move on. Does that make sense? Now let's right. look at some data stream. So I'll go back over and we'll look at data stream. It's gonna get a little noisy we're going to start it up in a little bit, not just yet. We want to look at a few things before we do a startup. Remember, the most important thing you could always look at is make sure your battery voltage is good. Okay? If the battery voltage is not good, you run into problems, correct? Now, these are all in alphabetical order and numbers go first. You can change that order. But you notice here the O2 sensor. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change it, I'm going to press line graph, I'm going to check, make it a bar, and I'm going to go digital. So I'm going to put it back to the graph. Notice it says 5 volts. This is an oxygen sensor for the vehicle. And we're going to show you something about this later on in case you're not used to a Chrysler vehicle. They use 5 volts as a line reference to see if there's any issues. Why would they do that, Pierre? They do that as a uh, integrity check. They're basically putting the five volts out on the wire and making sure that there's no short or uh, other interference in that wire. And this is also true if you're like on a Ford crank sensor that's AC generated on some of them. You have a voltage on them. They're doing this to check the integrity of the circuit. Does that make sense? They call it reference voltage. Reference voltage. So there's one of the things there that we're looking at. Let's take a look down this pit this PID list, and I'll try to go as slow as possible down. Now you notice the update rate when I move, because we have so many PIDs, 
you'll see that the screen kind of flashes, so watch that. You see no data, and then it comes up. Again, I'm going to do it. I'll go up to the top. No data, no data, no data. Now you got numbers. We'll talk about that, and here you have an important tool of selecting certain PIDs so we get a faster update rate. That's super, super important. Ambient temperature voltage. Battery temperature voltage. Chrysler uses a BTS, battery temperature sensor. And of course, it was minus 40 out for my buddies up there in Alaska. Guess what? It would be 5 volts, wouldn't it? And that would equal minus 40. Well, some of those days up there in Fairbanks, Alaska, it gets minus 40 and then some. On the other hand, if you see minus 40 in Tucson, Arizona, you should look for a broken wire or a bad sensor. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> they just had 100 and something degrees up there. <laughs> Okay, so we're looking down the list. Look at all these neat things that we have here. And there's a lot of information. The problem is sometimes too much information, guess what? Makes it very difficult to know what to pick. How many times have you seen on certain scan tools where it may say EGR or misfire data and you just select that group of data? It's better to pick out the data that you actually need. So we're going to go down the list a little more, and then I'm going to show you how to pick some stuff. So let's do that. Oh, here's, here's a good one here, EGR sensor voltage. Now, why is this important to look at? Well, how about if the sensor voltage wasn't zero, what would this cause? Well, at idle, the sensor voltage should be very low, right? Near zero. If it's up, guess what? we have something stuck in the EGR pintle. And, and, and you probably have some type of a rough idle or a hesitation off idle, something like that, a drivability concern or an idle concern. Very good, and that's what we're looking at here. So make sure you pay attention to certain, certain things here. Let me move this list up. Some of these no datas, by the way, are because the car is key on engine off. They'll, they'll update when the car is running. And you got to remember, if there's 70, 80, or how many PIDs that were here, they're going to take time to update, and that, again, is why we're going to go to select items in a few minutes. So we want to, you know, carefully go through this. Here's another good thing here. Fuel level, 62%. How about a fuel level was 8%? Can this cause a problem? It's or, not, not going to run an EVAP test. Ah, very good. It may not run a monitor. We may have a conflict. So a lot of times if you have 100%, and how many customers used to bring those cars in with 100%? Yeah, they used to bring okay. it in with 4%. 4%. So guess what? <laughs> read RTFB, read the freaking book, or make sure you have over 15% fuel in the vehicle. And, and that's just a general rule, by the way. Some cars right. are 25 to 75. And right. You have to look so, at what the parameters are for that make and model. But That is correct. Uh, in, the, in the general sense, somewhere in the middle of the tank is good. Uh, at the very low end or the very high end, it's generally not going to run an EVAP test because um, they can't trust the results with that much air or that much fuel in the tank. Okay, so now we're looking at, notice we even have uh, idle air control amperage. We have grams per second flow through. We have injectors per cylinder here. Okay. Knock sensor voltage, natural vacuum leak detection, if it has it on the car. There's our oxygen sensor voltage. Oh, there's the mileage on my vehicle. It's 111,764 miles on it. And you just bought it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But. Okay. So we have a whole bunch of information that I'm going down. And there's our voltage, engine temperature, intake air temperature, barometric pressure. Now what would happen, Pierre, if the barrel was off? We know here in New York we're pretty close to sea level, right? That's correct. And if you had a barrel that was reading, oh, 25 inches, for example. Or even 27. Oh, what, it, even 27. <laughs> That thing is going to think it's at a much higher altitude with much thinner air. A la Colorado. A la Colorado, <laughs> right. And it's going to try to set the fuel mixture accordingly, which will be incorrect. It won't be enough fuel. 
and you'll end up with probably something like an 